Yes, everybody, welcome back. We have got Rennie Mullenstein. We have got Jay from the Scotty and Motty podcast. It's Housen's Brew, so I hope you've got the kettle on and I hope you're having a nice brew. Rennie, thank you for joining us. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Welcome. Thanks for inviting me. No problem. Uh, we are going to be talking about Rennie's book, like this. Volume one, which we're going to get into that as well, because that was a, a deliberate... Yeah, the, uh, the, the, the soccer tutor of the company must have put it on it. I didn't even know when it was going <laughs> volume two. No, I'm just kidding. So. Uh, but yeah, Rennie Mullenstein and Man United Methods of Success, 2007 to 2013. We did all right in that time. Yeah, we did very well. It was an unbelievable, uh, successful period. It was unique, I felt. If you go back and you think about it, obviously, when you're in it, you just go through the daily routines, you, you, you train, you work with the players, you go from game to game, games come thick and fast. Um, obviously, Sir Alex Ferguson was still the manager then, uh, won already a lot of things, but in that particular period, it turned out to be the most successful period in the history of Manchester United. So it was, it was unique from, from every angle, the squad that we had, the quality of players that we've had, the staff that was there, it was just fantastic. Yeah, we were, you know, Drogba's offside goal and Aguero blasting it over the bar away from seven titles in the bounce. Seven titles in the seven bounce, Seven titles yeah. on the bounce. Imagine. It's unreal, isn't it? I think recently it's just shown how big an achievement that was when you see teams that are trying to retain a title, trying to get back to sort of keep that level. And the it fact was, that we it did was, it. It was almost as good as the cup win in 91, 92. That's like that was... <laughs> True or not? It's not, it's not far off. I, I it's a good, do you know what? Champions League double. All right, it's good. But as nah. me and Jay would say, nah, nah. it's nah. not the cup winner's cup, It's not it? the cup winner's cup in one. And now you've heard it from the man himself. Yeah. So. It, was, it was in Rotterdam. It was in the Koi. You know, I, I, was, I saw the game. I mean, you know, obviously, that was, you know, that was when I fell in love with United. <laughs> <laughs> See, we're not lying when we say that's the most important game ever. Yeah. It's, you've, you've heard it, the facts. Five titles, yeah. a Champions League, three Champions League finals, not on the same level as, as a European Cup winners' Cup win in 91. There we go. That's what's nah, The trophy consigned to history. No, 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 no. It's 100%. Mark Hughes, two goals he scored. I, I bump into Mark once in a while, and we always talk about it again, every time I see <laughs> <laughs> that's it I'm, I'm happy now uh, thanks I'm for going. tuning in we'll see you fucking next time got what we wanted right. see, see you guys <laughs> alright ready um, why have you wrote a book why write in a book yeah it, it's actually um, uh, well there's quite a few people coaches have asked me <clears throat> down the line you know is a have you got some material, have some written down, uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, I came across this company called Soccer Tutor. They produce a lot of good coaching books, I have to say. I've but, got them all. Huh? I've got the Bielsa one, I've yeah. got the Pep one, yeah. got the Jose one. But they've all, they all been written by sort of a guest, of a, like a ghostwriter, somebody that studies them, and then they write it down. Very good, I have to say, I was impressed with them. And uh, obviously the, the owner, uh, George Palaceras, I think his name is, George reached out to me and said, at one point, listen, we know we've purchased a few books. Uh, we know of you know, your career at Manchester United. Would you be interested in writing one yourself? So we met up with him and we had a, you know, a chat and discussion and uh, we said, let's, let's go for it. But I always felt I did just not want to make a coaching book where you explain a little bit about a conditioning game or a, you know, a possession game or a shooting drill and then have loads and loads. I wanted... The, the, the coaches first and foremost, but even even the fans to give an insight. What, in my opinion, were the parameters? You know why we were so successful at the time. It's not just by luck. You know what I mean. There are things have to click into place. You know, um, and, and I think that is that is what's unique about the book. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've got the other books. They are the Jose one, especially will give you an aneurysm trying to read it. There's so many drills in there that it loses its interest. I've I've not gone into the drills specifically in this, but there's a lot of text and explaining and paragraphs, like you said, explaining the parameters, explaining the organisation uh, and the, the way things worked at Manchester United as well. So I, I do think that even if you're not a coach, if you are a coach and you've not got it, you're doing yourself a disservice. But even if you're not a coach and you're just a fan and you want to know more about why we were successful in that period, which was pretty successful, I think, uh, to be fair to say. <laughs> Just a bit. It's definitely worth having a look at. <laughs> almost as good. <laughs> almost as good as the 91 Cup Final. Cup final. Yeah, I mean, that's, all, that's, as, that's as high as you can get in it, being almost as good as that. So it yeah. can't be too, but can't be too shabby. Uh, yeah, there's a couple of things that you mentioned in the book as being uh, very key. Something that I'm trying to really focus on my own learning um, with, and that's a lot on the transition 
the defensive transition and the attacking transition and uh, counter-attacking seems to have come under a lot of criticism of late, almost as just a stick to beat Oli with and, and the lads with for some apparent reason. But you think counter-attacking's, what did you say before? A beautiful expression of football? That Well, <clears throat> I think it's one of the most important parts of, of the game and one of the most beautiful parts of the game if well, you know, well executed. And at the end of the day, I mean... If you've got a lot of pace up front and the opposition leaves a lot of space in behind the back four, it, it's just crying out for counter-attack. I mean, go back to games that we've played with Manchester United and, and recall some of the the Arsenal games, especially the Arsenal games that we played away in in, uh, in the Champions League, but also in the league. And Wenger had a very distinctive style of play. We, we knew that. There was no secrets. There was also no plan B. We know exactly what he's going to do. There was a link between most of the time uh, with Fabregas and and, uh, and Van Persie, you know, uh, when Fabregas had the ball, Van Persie was on his bike, so we stopped from Fabregas getting on the ball, so they have to make other uh, solutions. But they were very open, so we knew we would always set up defensively to sort of intercept the ball and then go forward straight away, break the lines. The moment we did that, we had, you know, Park running forward, Rooney running forward, Nani running forward, Ronaldo running forward, you know, full pace, and we would break the lines as quick as we could. I love it. I really think it's a really fantastic element to the game. You know, I think sometimes, you know, uh, when teams sit behind the ball, you have to break them down and you have to sort of keep moving the ball and you get laboured and all that. That's by far not as exciting to watch as, you know, good, you know, counter-attacking football. It's just a weapon. 100%. I mean, you, you know, you mentioned the Arsenal game. We always look at that goal with Rooney, with Park, with Ronaldo as a, a great goal. It's an example of a great goal. And, you know, no one looks at goals... That was a bit boring. Well, the, the thing for us, it's, it's just logic, really. It's common sense. Think about it. Arsenal has the ball. They're moving the ball about. We're in a good defensive shape. We told the defenders, most of the defenders, don't be sort of in behind your attackers. Sort of be half side on, on the side of the ball. So when it comes, you can step in. If you're behind, you can't. But if you're side on, you can step in. So that player, for instance, on this side, would have to sort of... That player would have to come across. So if you would turn that way... He could cover that side. So you're trying to say, don't get pinned. Yeah, don't, don't get pinned. Hold, hold yeah, we, we had a good organisation, but we knew what they sort of passes would be looked for. So the moment we would be able to intercept the ball, where Michael Carrick, for instance, was in, it was was fantastic at, or Rio would step in front, the first ball then, it was not hold on the ball, bang, straight forward. Straight forward, break the line, bang, runners in behind, because there were spaces there to hit. And was it always it, looking for the man, or would you sometimes just put it in a channel? Whatever, whatever was on. Whatever was the best option. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not rocket science. You make it sound easy. Yeah, <laughs> that's almost far yeah. too simple. Yeah, to it's just, just like, easy. Well, it's, it's, it's another little example as well, uh, Stephen. I can remember, and that was uh, you maybe speak a little bit about later with, with Cristiano, but we did a lot. In football, in possession, the most important thing, and Ola actually mentioned it, um, I think in the last game against Fulham, it was the word rhythm. Yeah, and rhythm is undervalued, really undervalued. Rhythm is the most important aspect in teams that have possession. Good teams, they can create rhythm, they maintain rhythm, and they can change rhythm. So if you're playing out from the back, you sort of go one and two touch. You know, you're working down the sides. When you get, you know, breaking a line, you go a bit higher up, you change the rhythm. And when it gets congested, you need to go into one touch football, you know, or back and through, and then runners. That's a different, you know, flow of the game, rhythm. You, if you can understand that, you do. So we did a lot of possession games, a lot of condition games where it was only one touch. And Cristiano Ronaldo would come to me, he would hate it, you know what I mean? One touch, he's, you know, he loves the ball on his feet. So <laughs> likes to run with it. Rene, why do we always play one touch? Why do we always play one touch? Well, one touch. He says, Cristiano, how, how often did you give the ball away in that possession? It was only, let's say, what do you call it? 7v7 plus 2 or 8v8 plus 1, you know, 2 times 8 minutes, something like that. How many times did you give the ball away? Never. So great. So you think you're good at it? Yeah, fantastic. Now let me ask you another question. Why do you always want the ball into feet and then turn and run with it? Well, I like the ball into feet. Yeah, but let me ask you, are you quick or are you slow? Oh, I'm quick. How quick? I'm the quickest of the lot. Okay. <laughs> How good is Paul Scholes, do you think? Oh, Paul's very good. Exactly. So do you think that Paul can give you the ball into space whenever you want it? Oh, yeah. So well, there he is. Why are you not running? Because Paul will give it you. You know what I mean? And it's much easier straight away in front of the goal. The one-touch football is all about that rhythm, you know, yeah. dragging players out, moving the ball, so they can't get a set organisation. That's why you do it. And then recognise the moments to 
play that penetrating pass for that penetrating run. Exciting, isn't it? It is. <laughs> Honestly, this is a treat. I don't I even give a fuck if any of you lot are watching. I'm just going to pepper him with questions. Um, when you're setting a curriculum for the season, because um, I don't think people quite understand how much technical work the players still have to go through on a daily basis. Um, and I'll get into this in a little bit later on about the one-to-one -one stuff that you do. Do you plan um, six, 12, 18 weeks out in advance for what you're going to do? Or is it reactionary every week? Uh, the, the letter, but you have to understand, and it's all basically being described in the book. Um, it all comes down to your your principles, your principles of play. What do you want? And I can still remember Ferguson calling me into his office. That was in August uh, uh, when when I was sort of appointed first team coach, and Mick Feeler was assistant manager. And he just brought me into his office uh, during a, an international week. I still remember it. He had a he had a flip chart there. And he's writing things on it. And he said, listen, I just want to have a quick chat about when I close my eyes and I want to imagine United at its best in defense, transition or attacking, this is what I want to see. So he said, from a defensive point of view, and he had a few things written down. He said, from a defense point of view, I want us to be able to press, to press high, you know, to press in numbers. I want us to be able to drop and press on an area or a certain player. If you don't want to press, I want us to be able to defend from a block, you know, very hard to break down and, and do it that way. If we do have to defend sometimes around the area, you know, nice and compact, no distance given away, and then we can spring and we can break. So that was the defensive side. Um, plus, obviously, we need to deal with the defensive set pieces. Next <coughs> uh, thing was all about possession. And I come back to what I said. It says possession is, is key. You know, uh, there's three momentums in the game. A team has an initiative which is the team most of the time that has most of the ball. And that's when you need to try to create chances and hopefully score goals. Because if you score goals, you control the game. And from that, if you can score another one, then basically you start to dominate the game. But rhythm is the one that runs through that possession. You always have a possession with a purpose. Yeah, You try to create chances, score goals. If you're leading 1-0 five minutes before half time, you just keep the ball. Yeah, Run the energy out of the legs. Players need to understand that. And they need to understand that rhythm. So that's important. Next page. He said, this is the most important page, the attacking side of the game. And he's only had four, four words, I think, written on it. He says, if I want to see United attack, I want to see them attack with pace, power, penetration, and unpredictability. And these are the four things that I want you to instill in that team, in the individual players, every single training, every single day, well, no matter what you do. Whether it's a possession game, it's a shooting drill, it's, it's competitive small-sided games, it doesn't matter. Those things are constantly in there. So basically, my curriculum was written on three uh, flip chart pages. That was it. And obviously, he says, everything is linked together by quick transition. You know, it's obviously, you know, the four, four or five second rule. When we lose the ball, react quickly, you know. And depending what our tactic strategy is, are we going to press or not? That decides, are you going to chase the ball or are you going to go into a shape? You know, that sort of thing. But those were the parameters. So we didn't work ahead. And from that, that was basically, obviously, you had different oppositions in the league. You know, are you playing a top team? Are you playing, you know, a team in the middle of the table? Or maybe somebody's fighting relegation. Next game was the Champions League away. So there were so many parameters and variables. But the principles were always, always the same. And it was all about mainly us, 80 to 75% was all about us. How are we going to win the game? 20%, 25% about the opposition. Respect the opposition. This is the style. This is the strategies. This is the, lo this is the current run. Uh, these are the key players. This is how they can hurt you. This is how we're going to deal with it. And this is how we're going to beat them. That was the main focus. This is how, how, how we're going to win the game. So that would be the, the match day preparation and team talk would be focused on that basic structure. Yeah. Yeah, because if you look at sort of preparing the team for the upcoming game, it was like, and we always sort of work like three games ahead, sort of, in, in, in our schedule. So Alex would always think, okay, in three games time we play, let's say Liverpool away, on a Wednesday we'll play at home to Basel in the Champions League, and uh, in, in two days' time or three days' time we, we play against, uh, let's say, Stoke at home, whatever. So we always look. So we would sort of have ideal lineups in our head who we're we going to play against Liverpool, who we're going to play against Basel, 
who we're going to play and how we're going to work it, how much rotations do we need, how much rotations do we want, depending on the, on the season. Because in the beginning of the season to sort of almost up to the end of sort of February, there was quite a lot of rotations. And then when you came to the, to the back end of the season, you saw lesser rotations. And that was paper. deliberate. Deliberate, yeah, because then you need stability, you need to get a team to get in a flow, and then obviously you, you want your, you know, your best players to play. But from a daily then, to, to prepare the team, like we would get them in, you know, we have a chat, I would have a chat with him. Um, Every day? Yeah, we, we would bring the players in, obviously you need to tell them what you're going to do in training, the reasons why. You would explain some information already, listen, we're up against Stoke, this is the, the, the current run, you know, five games, always five games, you know what I mean? The, the lost three drew one, won one. Uh, these are the key players. Roy the lap with a long, long throwing, for instance. We need to work on that because it can hurt you. They scored uh, some of the goals that they scored came from there, so we want to prepare to that. Um, what can we expect otherwise? This and this and this. This is how we're going to prepare them. Then the day after, I would back that up by video footage. So we've got the players in. So listen, remember we talk about Stoke. This is what other opposition has done. This is what they've done. Have a look at it. Brilliant. Okay. Another training session, moving towards more to, you know, to the game. And then obviously when it came to the game, it was all about us. This is how we're going to beat them. This is what other teams have done. This is what we're going to do. This is what we are good at. This bump. And then, because the manager would only give the team, you know, the day on, on the match day. So it was, it, we couldn't say, for instance, to you, Steve, if you, you Steve, I know you're playing. That, that could only you're happen. You're not going to fucking drop now, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Mark. that could only happen, you know, on, on the day. So yeah. it was... You know, sure. But everybody, in that respect, everybody had to expect, I need to be ready to play. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and that was sort of the line, like I said, it's all described perfectly in, in that book. What's the dynamic and sort of roles of, um, what was yourself, Mick, and so Alex's day-to-day -day sort of responsibilities? I think um, uh, the manager himself and, and Mick sort of, mainly sort of, again, looked after the, the management of all, aspects basically uh mick myself tony strelick eric Steele, uh, steve mcnally the doc we would we would come together in the morning always have a quick look at you know at the outlook of the board of the players available it was very simple you know uh traffic light system yeah. red yellow green red injured can't train yellow might do some part of the training or maybe work aside with it with the physio the green players are the ones that we focused on then we looked at okay uh, we always look at uh, match day and then match day minus one, match day minus two, depending on the intensity that we want to we want to hit. Tony was very important to that, so I knew then what sort of numbers I would work with. You know, high intensity. You know, so many numbers in those areas. You know, so many repetitions. Um, and like I said, uh, what we wanted to do in training was was very much clear because obviously th those things on the three pages so I kept uh, be a running theme. The most important thing with those players is that there has so much quality, so much talent, so much potential. It is, you need, you need to, every training had a purpose and you need to explain that purpose that, you know, the players understand that. More than anything, you always need to challenge those players. Yeah? And then we always looked at quality and intensity. Those were the two things to go hand in hand. If the tempo is too slow, it's not match realistic. You know what I mean? Don't get anything out of it. If the tempo is too high and it's too rushed, too many mistakes, it's also no good. So that's the fine line to find that. But there wasn't anything going on as the traditional stop, stand, still coaching. You know, what are you doing here? You, you need to be there and all this. Those players are good enough. What I needed to do is one, inform, and secondly, facilitate, yeah? And then stimulate, basically. Come on, you need to get an excitement, go in place, need to understand stand it and, 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 and enjoy the training. So, and they were good enough to take the responsibility, you know? And that's one of the most important aspects of players in a team, in a squad, where you've got a lot of experience, you empower them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Half a word, they understand. There's a lot of leaders in that group. You know what I mean? Let's, if, for instance, if, if, we, if we knew that, for instance, we would get a lot of joy from switching the play from right to left, where our left winger would come in the pocket, let's say Gex, for instance, and Petrus Ever would bum on. You know, I wouldn't have to stop the play and say, stop there. You know what I mean? You know, now Giggs, you need to come in, pat your run and, and, and scold you. I would just, you know, quietly off the thing, you guys, you three, come here. We understand what I'm looking for? Great. Okay, off, off you go. Great. Sir Alex in his book, or one of his books, mentioned, uh, he asked you specifically, if the intensity is not right, you do it again until it is right. <clears throat> How often did you have to restart a session again? I can't imagine much in that time frame. 
I, t I tell you something, um, Stephen, and, and the most, for me, it was as enjoyable as all for the players, but I think the biggest compliment I think I've ever had in that, in that period of that six years that I was the first team coach, never, ever, any time any player came to me and said, Jesus, Wayne, that was shit, that, that was a shit session. I uh, really, uh, that was the, honestly, and I'm just telling you, players are not like, oh, fantastic, great. No, they yeah. don't do it. But players yeah. are, when, when, when they don't say anything, you know what I mean? But when they sort of, you can see in the body language or whatever, they, they actually, they, they think it's a shame the session is finished. That's why we had so many players doing extras after the training session, whether it was, you know, Rio and Vidi's defending headers, you know what I mean? Or whatever it was, it was other players working on long range passing. We did all the strength and conditioning people now. No, you can't do this and finish it. We did finishing every single day. Every single day we did, we did finishing in different ways, you know what I mean? Yeah. Sort of every, every, every single training. And, and now look at all the strength and conditioning people. Oh, you can't do this and uh, hamstring here and no problem every day. Um, Rio gave us a couple of questions. I sort of put one of them to you before we went on there because it's just fucking nonsense. <laughs> Sorry, Rio. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a couple that he, he mentioned that probably maybe, are worth. maybe maybe if you think about it, it was something that was always the most you know exp expansive expansive you know expansive. <laughs> I think he, he the reason I think where he relates to is I think there was a lot of similar themes through the session, but no session was the same. It was never ever that those players came off. Oh, we do this again, you know yeah. what I mean? And it looked like a lot happened because a lot of coaches managed because there's limited training time, yeah, because they're playing a Saturday, they're playing a Tuesday, they're playing a Saturday, they're playing a Wednesday, they're playing a Sunday, you know what I mean? So there's recovery, and then there's one or two sessions, you know what I mean? And yeah. they use it almost a little bit as an excuse, we can't do much. I was the opposite. It says the time that's available, yeah, you need to you need to use. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a different way, it's a different way of approach. And it's like, it's the same thing. If you give the players the same thing over and over again, they get bored. They want to get they like they, they want to get you know what I mean. Oh, what are we doing today? Yeah. Uh, every every session, Rooney would come up to what are we doing today, Ray? What are we doing today? He says today, Wayne, is special because we're going to replay the '91 Cup game. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to be Mark Hughes? Yeah. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's stuff for dreams. Uh, <laughs> no, Rio really also would. says uh, yeah. Said ask Ray who challenged him the most in training. Was it me or Rooney or both? Uh, well, all the players did. I mean, obviously, I, I can still remember, and that was fine. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you, the, the hardest thing for any coach is obviously put good sessions on and and do the things I just described before. But when it comes to playing games, you you, you need to have some sort of referee. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost <laughs> impossible, and that's almost impossible with those guys because they all want to win. Yeah, you know, the winners. You know what I mean? Is the ball out? Is it not out? You know, this and that and the other. And that was, you know, we had we had a few blowouts. You know, what I mean, it coming to worse. I mean, that's fine, no problem at all, as long as the end of the day there's respect. You know, for for everybody, what everybody was doing, and like I said, I I I enjoyed that period tremendously. You know, every, every single session, like, and and I always remember that Ferguson said to us, we we got we got a, a world class quote here, which we ask for world class performances three times a week. Yeah, yeah. On on the back of that, they the players can expect the world class, you know, support from us. You know, so every training needs to be bob on. Every, and you always used to say as well, everything you do in training, Rene, will manifest itself in the game, good and bad. So if you start to get bad habits into training, you yeah. will start to see it in the game. So that's why the intensity, the quality intensity was always that, that high. You know what I mean? Um, but the both, I mean, Rooney could come, he, he would chase me off the park if I would give him a, you know, not a penalty or something. <laughs> all that, you know, and, Can you imagine uh, that? <laughs> yeah, so now it's good. It's good. Uh, Rio also mentioned a little bit about uh, the one to one stuff. Now, when you was last on my podcast, we spoke about some of the one to one work you did with Ronaldo. That might have paid off thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of them finishing drills. Yeah. You've done all right on it. Since. Yeah, he did. He did. The most did. goal scoring player ever. Unbelievable. It's Unbelievable. not bad on your CD, he, he, right? he deserves everything. He deserves every accolade, every trophy. Because, and, and, he's, and he's still going. Look at him. You know, I mean, he's, he, he looks like, well, how old is he now? 34, is he? Five, 35, 35. 35. 35, and he's got a biological body of somebody like 23, 24. I mean, you know, always. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know. When, you, when you were coaching, I know obviously by the time you were coaching the first team, he was already a fantastic player and was starting to sort of achieve a lot. Did you think that he was going to go on and just do the things that he's done? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, no, no. It might be strange, but a lot of people have that. Yeah. Uh, and when, when when Cristiano came to United, he was 18, 
And uh, at that time, I've, I've already started to do some individual work with players. Right. I.e. Ruud van Estroy and the stuff with Giggsy and uh, the, the things with Rio, but also with, with Diego Forlan. And I can remember one of the first times I did after session, Diego came to me and we sort of picked up where we left off. You know, we did a few things and blah, blah, blah. And it was always really uh, adding to the, the technical toolbox of making it more unpredictable and then try to implement it in the game situation. That was the whole format, really. And as soon as he saw me, you know, he came up, can I join in? Yeah, of course you can join in. And uh, because Cristiano was, was, how do you say it, sort of a tricky player, you know, and a player that had a little bit of tricks and that and the other, but... But we want him to make more efficient. Yeah, you know, it needs to be a weapon. You need to hurt opposition with it. You know, so it was a combination of again, giving giving functional functional skills, functional techniques to change direction, functional techniques to go past and beyond players, functional techniques to that leading into a cross or a finish, that that sort of stuff, um, and then bringing him from awareness to understanding. You know, he, he was aware he was a forward. He was aware he was tall. He was aware he was quick. He was aware, but does he understand, did he understand what to do in a, in a given situation if that particular player was on the ball or when the opposition was there? That, that, that is a combination of things. And that awareness to understand. Also, he had a different outlook and an attitude to scoring goals. He always wanted to score the special goal, the one that flew in top corner. Yeah. You know what I mean? And best goal of the season. But by trying that, he would lose out on maybe scoring another 15 goals. So yeah. I wanted to I wanted to get him from awareness to understanding. It's the amount of goals you score. It's the variety of goals you score, and that's why at one point I set him down and, and I let him I let him look at a video that I prepared with all the goals, a lot of goals scored by um, by obviously by by Sheringham of Cole York, Sheringham, Solskjaer of Anistroy. You know, it was maybe ten minute video, which is something like that. The goals after goal, bang, 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 bang. And I asked him, what what did you see? So when I finished, so he sat there, they're like focused on the screen. So what did you see? He says, What do you mean? <laughs> so that's not Correct. the right answer. It's not the right, <laughs> it's not the right yeah. answer. It's not, it's not the right answer. Chris. Let's watch it again. So, yeah, exactly. We did. Yeah. And it says, now you know the question. Look at it, but look at it from, from a different perspective. And then I said, I asked him again, what did you see? He says, Well, what I saw was uh, all the finishes are one or two touch finishes. Yeah. There's a variety in the finishes, yeah? So there's headers, there's volleys, there's tap-ins, there's chips, there's benders, there's whatever it is. And, and the last but not least is this most of the goals, some of the goals, most of the goals are scored in, you know, into the central part of the goal or just on the outside, you know, yeah. like that. And the fewest goals are scored from outside the box. So those three were sort of the three things. And so those are exactly the three things we're going to work on, you know? Uh, again, it's all it's all being described uh, described in the book, and he he needed to sort of change his attitude to not wanting to just to score the, the the goal of the year. No, I want to score as many goals as I can. You know what I mean? And yeah. again and again and again and again. Wonder make if it he ever did that? Huh? Wonder if he ever did that? No, you didn't hear much from him nowadays. Do you? No, he no. left United and yeah, just, just disappeared. No, hardly yeah. scored any goals. Yeah, Shame, really. Yeah. Didn't work actually. Well, yeah. I tried to do. <laughs> yeah, maybe get his money back. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he's just seen that with that um, the Czech fella that played, can, is yeah, it? that played all, in some regional league all the way through World War Two. Because they've extended it, they extended yeah. it. Yeah, the Czech said, Republic, oh, Czech Republic have gone. Sixty-two yeah. goals in a draw. Yeah, yeah. Um, I bet Ronaldo just looked at that and gone, "Fucking cool." All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> give me a, yeah, goals, yeah, give me a season and a half. Hold yeah. on a minute, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll sort that out. Do you reckon he goes another country after this? Just badge collecting now, picking up trophies and the, 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 the ultimate the ultimate driving force for Cristiano is 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 winning. So if he if he moves to another country and you know I th I, I I could see him maybe maybe going to America, you know, wow. but he would want to go to a team. Uh, but obviously in America it's hard it's hard to to guess because obviously they reject the whole league with you know players going here and there yeah. etc. So. When you go, let's say, when you go to from from Man United to to Real Madrid, you got a good chance of you know picking up another, you know, uh, league title or Champions League. If you go from Real Madrid to Juventus, same thing. So he's he's picked those choices well, and was really remarkable that he has done that. You know, wherever he went, he's never, you know, he's never dipped form. He's just kept on going. He's getting older, but the form is 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 still there. It's just amazing. Yeah, uh, I wonder who get into Miami with Beckham. 
I don't know, maybe, yeah, longer term. Still think he's probably got. You can't see him going somewhere like Seattle, can you? No. Well, you Miami's know. more his vibe. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> somewhere with a beat. But it would be it, it would be a coup. I tell you, if David, if David would... Uh... Well, they've got the rule, haven't they, which allows one, like, mental player to play, because they're caca at Orlando. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think everyone else is on about 1,500 quid a week, and he's on, like, what? How Where was it, Rooney? Really? Rooney went DC, didn't he? Yeah. 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 yeah, he was on a similar sort of yeah. ticket, I think, yeah. And he was um, tearing it up there, like, wasn't he? Some of the goals he was scoring. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He, he did. I spoke to him, uh, actually, Wayne, about it, because his son was doing some um, some football in, in uh, Bucks football in Cheadle. My son works there. All oh, right. And uh, I just happened to be there, and Wayne came to collect uh, Kai, I think it was. And we just checked about it. So I asked him how, how it was, because I did six months of um, consultancy for Philadelphia Union, and, and that was still, you know, things were growing, you know what I mean? And it's, it's grown tremendously. He loved it. He, he really he thought it was great. The only thing was, obviously, the burden was the travelling. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's so many distances to travel. But in terms of football and stadiums and fans and great. It's getting there. Yeah. It's definitely getting there. And they're getting their own little culture in there too about it. Not like a, a fake culture. But no, like. no, you're right. You're absolutely spot on, Stephen. Because before, it was it was always the, the kids, how do you call it? The, the, the kids were, let's say, kids 15, 20 years ago are now adults. And they've grown up in, in only a soccer environment, right. so that's only they, they're not they're not uh, bothered about baseball or American football or, or, or basketball. It's it's soccer for them. It's you're right, you're absolutely right, and yeah. and that will only grow stronger. Yeah, and I think they've got a strong women's game. Yeah, um, obviously, um, you know the, the men's national team's not the joke it used to be. You know they they can get to the knockout stages in World Cups and stuff like that. So that's got to be taken seriously. Um, and you know, like anything America does, it puts dough in it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that means that they've got good facilities. That means they get professional coaches, which, you know, ultimately leads to results. So I would expect America to be a real force in 15, 20 years uh, on the world stage. On, le- that, 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 on one thing, on one condition, the only, the only if, they, if they get the, the coaching side right at grassroots level, yeah. and from a technical point of view, because really it's always based on, you know, uh, who's the strongest, who's the fittest. You know what I mean? The only, only player that basically has got that, that element is Pulisic, you know, from Chelsea. Yeah. He's quick, you know, agile, you know, he's, he's, he's got a trick. But how many of those players have you got? And basically, in America, there's tons of them. But a lot of teams, a lot of clubs, they still have the wrong approach in, in, in terms of developing those skillful technical players. That's what they need to get right. If they get that right from six even before six, almost from three to six to nine to 12, all those brackets, if they get that right, then they have a chance. If they don't, no problem. You will yeah. still see a, you know, a fit, well-organized team, but not with, with any finesse. Yeah, that real football intelligence of decades of yeah, you want, you want football. What, yeah, what you need, you need the American Rio, you need the American Skulls uh, or Xavi, you need the American Ronaldo or Messi, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or Ronaldo in American gigs. Players that have that, 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 that technical quality and the flair and, you know, to, to, uh, to, uh, to decide games. I uh, keep getting your questions in. Um, now, I know the question that you all want to ask is, would Rene be coming back to Manchester United? But Rene obviously has a contract with Australia at the moment. So out of respect mm. for his job at Australia, it's not a question that we're going to be asking him on air. Um, but yeah, um, any other questions that you've got for Rennie? Let's talk about the current side. Let's talk about, you know, there's a lot of people asking about development of players at the moment. Um, do you think people like Mason could de- um, benefit from having a little bit more finishing and um, tactical, technical sort of work? You know, are people still doing it with defenders? Just before we went on air, you were talking about what you did with Rio. I wasn't even aware of that um, until, you know, 25 minutes ago. Mm. But what was it he was doing with Rio? But Rio, Rio had a you know a, a spell where I worked with him and and you know when I said you you need to then analyze the position they're playing in you know so what what are the defensive aspects they need to deal with you know what are the sort of uh, things they need to they need to be good at when when we're on the ball you know what I mean so all different sort of aspects and I can remember at the time we did quite a bit of you know a bit of heading you know what I mean I thought there was room for improvement he thought there was room for improvement. And it was funny because sometimes you need to strip things down. You know what I mean? Not just start of a, go to the end product. No, start to strip things down and, and try to make those players feel again what is really important, you know, for me to having the ball clearly. 
You know, there's a lot of aspects to it, technical aspects to it, to making sure it needs to come from the core, the balance and all that. So they're all sort of exercises like that, and you're working towards the game scenario. Okay, now we got it. We worked on your heading. You're good. Timing is important. So now the crosses are coming in, you know, and then you pick, let's say, there's the, there's the goal here. You know, the cross comes from here, then from there, then from there, from there. So what is your position like? Where would you have the ball clear? You know, distance and height, that sort of thing. All those, all the sort of stuff. A lot of, a lot of agility, agility work when balls goes in behind. You know, how quickly can we turn? Uh, if you're chased by the by an attacker, what rather than just play the ball back to the goalkeeper, are there any moves and skills that you can use to turn away? That sort of stuff. Carrying the ball forward. You know, you know when it, uh, there's a striker there, but you're carrying the ball. Passing selection, that sort of stuff. Short, you know, into midfield, into the pockets. Diagonal balls over the top, you know what I mean? Uh, all that, all that stuff, all the range that goes with a, with a player. So, yeah, it was uh, it was good stuff. I'm going to talk about a happy time and then a not so happy time. <laughs> Start with a happy time. Um, I actually can't remember if we've just done this on air or not. Go on, Moscow. No, we never. didn't do it on air. No. Was it off air? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting here. I can't remember. Um, <laughs> Moscow. Where was you from Moscow? Where I was. I was uh, at that particular time. I was sort of the the I, the technical coach, you know, around the first team. So I was working with the first team, but sort of um, I didn't travel with the the, the match squad. So was to it on speak. the bench. Yeah, I wasn't sort of on the bench, which give which really was really good because it gives a fantastic opportunity for me. We work players that sort of had to come back from injury or weren't selected for the game, but still they had to train. So you you ended up at times sometimes working with one player, two players, three players, four players. Sometimes I could drag some players in, you know, from the reserve team, you know, so it was all good. But what it was, you could have a lot of quality time with those players. You could really work with them. And most important thing for me was, you know, it gave me a really good opportunity to to have a look at him and, and work with him technically. And I always used to use the word, and again, it's, it's all described in the book, and it's important for coaches and message. Never use the word change, you know, especially with with um, old, older players, you know. Uh, they're sort of the ones that become the finished article, 16, 17, 18, and beyond, the professionals. If you use the word change, then all the players go straight away, well, what, what mm -hmm. I'm doing wrong? You know what I mean? So it's a negative approach. I would always use the approach, listen, I really think we can add this to your game. Right. It's so simple, but yeah. add is more. They would say, oh, yeah, show me, give it me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, we need to change this to go. Pfft. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, why would he change this? You, have done, you know what I mean? But when you add and you show them and they, and they experience it, it's great. So back to Moscow was that obviously all the work was done, but obviously I flew with, you know, a lot of other Manchester United staff. So I was in, in, the, in, the, in the stadium, in the stands, um, you know, when, uh, when, the, when the game was, obviously, and um, when the penalties were taken. So. Right, John Terry's walking up. This is from Peter. <laughs> John Terry's walking up. What's going through your head? I, I honestly, at the day, because I can remember it clearly, and I said, I said to my wife next to me, he's going to miss it. And I tell you for <laughs> why. No, and the reason, I, I, and the reason, I, I wish I had that. And the reason why, because, and I said, the reason for why, because I looked at him and it was like, right, this is John Terry, and he's looked at it, this is my moment. I'm just <laughs> going to write my name in history here. His focus was purely on himself rather than, yeah. you know, on the team. Let's, let's just score. And Chelsea, as the club and the team, will, will win it. No, no, no. It was, you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what I, uh, uh, that's what I said to the missus. I still remember. And uh, great, you know. After that, and then Van der Sar, you know, saves the uh, saves the NL Cup penalty. Fucking men. It's amazing. Um, ah, the feeling, you know, just the you know, just the euphoria and everybody. Because it was great for me as well. It it, it would have been fantastic on the bench for sure and the players, but it was equally as. As great with with all the staff members that are so important do such an important job throughout the year, you know not 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 have the you know the the glory that goes with it, but it's important. Yeah, and to then share that with and the the happiness in the eyes and it's great. What a weird moment it is as well because there's so many cameras obviously out football and certainly in in shootouts. It never once cut to Fergie. It Didn't never know. once cut to the bench. It cut to the line of players. Mm. There's some famous photos, isn't there, from the players, and yeah, the camera yeah. was on Ronaldo mostly because he Ronaldo, cried afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, But it never cut to the bench. I don't ever remember mm. seeing it cut to the bench, which is weird in a shootout when it's so tense. Like it was raining at the time. Wasn't yeah, it? I've seen it, the. Yeah, I remember seeing the footage before the 
penalties or a Fergie before the penalties. Yeah, but I don't it was. Afterwards, you know. Yeah, it was probably because he, he probably didn't even see the penalties because he was he was constantly. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so, did we score? Yeah, <laughs> but the penalties that the penalties were taken superbly. Yeah, I mean, like Anderson. I know people uh, that was oh, in the stadium. Was he, how old is he then? It's about twenty. Was he then Anderson? So Listen, I I always have, and that's one of the things. And I can remember having a, when I was a manager in, in in Qatar before I came to Manchester United, we had a Brazilian player called Osvaldo, uh, uh, called Osvaldo, and uh, and uh, and everywhere I always looked at it. I sort of get a thing for it. Brazilians are very good penalty takers. Yeah. Really, never had any any doubt. And also, even when Anderson walked up, I thought, don't worry about that. He's Brazilian. <laughs> He's going to put it back in the net. That's probably Mate, my favourite. That that because his chest's out. Yeah. He just walks up, doesn't he? Great. And he just puts his foot through it. And then he's yeah. like that. You yeah. just think the confidence and the swagger. And, and, Do you know and, what he was doing before he took it? I don't so know. before we brought him on, I think we brought him on in, in extra time. Yeah. Literally yeah, yeah, for yeah, a penalty. Yeah. It was worth a late one, man. He it? was doing kick ups. <laughs> Chilling. Yeah. Just doing kick ups. <laughs> just. <laughs> the balls on the guy. That's what I mean, <laughs> unreal. <laughs> and I, I thought, that. I thought Giggsy's one as well was yeah. cool, cool as a cucumber. Honestly, it was so. That was because bottom. that was the one just before Nalka's one, wasn't it? I think so. Was it bottom corner? Wasn't it? it was bottom. Yeah. I placed it. Yeah. <sighs> just the, like you say though, you know, every like Hargreaves penalty, you're not saving that. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? No. Carrick's. It was. I mean. Yeah, and that was big, big, big stage. You know, to do that then and. It was a, it was a to be fairly honest it was a really good game from United I think we should have we should have tried to put it to bed a bit of a silly goal you know to give yeah. away you know typical Lampard goal I thought yeah. Got ricochet off three people yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah it was <laughs> but we 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 did, did, did wasn't wasn't there was one great attack it's just in the back wasn't that Giggs got a great good chance or good was Carrick had a shot you clear yeah. Yeah. Carrick had a shot didn't he I think was it Terry slid a good effort yeah yeah from like around roughly around the edge of the area where I think Checker committed himself. I think it was Terry who blocked it. Someone blocked it. But they had a chance as well, didn't they? The bar as well later on. It was a good game for a final. Yeah. Because finals are Because 99 final shit. was awful, wasn't it? As a game from a United point of view. But the 2008 one was a good game. Yeah. We, hit the bar, we hit the bar as well. Yeah. After we won it, we all went. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do, Steve, isn't it? The can one imagine, I can remember can is, is Vidic <laughs> just looking smashed, wearing a Russian policeman's hat. <laughs> I'm trying to give an interview to someone and oh, not having maybe. a clue what day it is. And I'm thinking, that's what it's <laughs> yeah. meant to be, isn't it? Of course, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, I imagine that was a good night then. It was. It was a very good night. Excellent. Yeah, I've heard the Fergie, I can't remember who it was. I think it might have been Paul McGuinness who interviewed about it and he was like, yeah, you know, obviously it rained so heavy and Fergie's shoes got ruined. And he's just come into the bar afterwards in like a pair of trainers. <laughs> like, who gives a fuck? <laughs> European champion, you dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, the non-happy time. To do, we to, do we have yeah. to do I'd, this? I, well, I think it was interesting. In, no, no, like, no. Um, You said Fergie gave like a bit of a speech um, in 2012 after we drew the league with City. <laughs> um, in, well, talk us through your entire experience of that five minutes or so then. From full time. Well, it, it, it came it came to that one particular game. Uh, whereas I think you know, if you look back to the league, I can I, I still remember one one particular game as well. Was that the year as well that we drew four four with, uh, with okay. Everton? Yeah, uh, that was that was one of the games. Uh, we we going forward, you know, should have scored five two. Zebra one on the Evra. line. 100%. Hits, hits the bat on it, hits the line. 100%. And we walk off the pitch 4-4. We had, we had Wigan where we had a stonewall penalty against yeah. Nani. Yeah. Uh, not given. So there were those moments before in the run-up to it. So it came to this final game. Obviously, it was, it was going to be close. And away to Sunderland. And it was a tough game, hard game. But we won 1-0. Yeah. You say did it. Rooney scored. Seen Rooney, yeah. Because again, <laughs> I'd almost put it out of my memory that game. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. So what was he... You know, we knew was was going on at, at City, but at the time we were we were winning, they they weren't, and we were leading, so we got this information. But we were finished, so basically, staff players they wait, just hover around the uh, the ground, really waiting for for things to happen. I thought I'll, I'll walk in inside, going to to What's see the it. trophy in the tunnel. <laughs> uh, pro yeah, probably knocked it over <laughs> on the way in. I don't know. Imagine walking in the tunnel, oh, seeing it, and be like, "No, I, I, I can't recall. I can't recall that." But I, I walked in because I thought, you know, what, I'm going to go to watch the last bit of the game with Simon Wells, our video and analyst, because he came in the tunnel. There was a little room on the right hand side where he was. <laughs> Just before I was about to enter the room, he came out with his head in his hands, oh. going like, 
they just scored, they just scored, they just scored. Bah, bah. And I was like, so I stood there in the tunnel and I thought, and I just had to turn left to go to the dressing room. So I straight went into the dressing room, sat, you know, sat in the corner and I felt like a, you know, a, a bag of cement heavy. It was like everything drained away from me. It was, and you, th you think, you know, and, and obviously I looked, I looked into it, you know, because they replayed the goal. And the first thing what I picked up on was that throw in. The QPR you know, throwing, yeah. Yeah, the QPR yeah. throwing. And I couldn't, honestly, I could not believe what, what, what I was seeing. And obviously, you know, Mark Hughes was, was our hero in 1991, 92. <laughs> he was the manager. And, and he was there. He could actually instruct the player. So it, right, just throw it in the corner. Yeah. Throw it as far in the corner as you can and get somebody up there to, to press hard. And hard would have only been able to, to hoof it. Now, City got the ball, got it down, credit to them, bang, 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 three quality passes, boom, into Aguero's feet, into the back of the net. And I was like... Anyway, so bit by bit, the players and the staff came, and then the manager came back in in the dressing room, and it's just like, you know, just try to imagine, you know, you, you work so hard for that moment, and obviously we are used to winning, we used, but more than anything, losing it from one goal to City, you know, the noisy neighbours, then that is not... There's triple, ten, hundred... You know, a thousand times as hard. You know, yeah. if you if you lose it, you have to hold your hand up and say they were far better. Look, it's ten points different, or you know what I mean. But this, with one with one goal and this and that and the other and all this was so. But it was there, and and I can still remember Bobby. So Bobby Charlton being in there, David Gill being in there, and the man of the players were there. And I remember Ferguson just say to the players, "It's a hard one to take. It's a hard one to take, and especially for the young players." You know, remember this moment, remember this feeling, you know, because this will spur us on next year, you know, to come to come back double as strong, double as hard, and we're gonna we're gonna get that trophy back. And that was it. And there's other than that, there's not much to do than just pack up your things and you know, and obviously you know let it accept it and, and get on with it. But that was always all uh, the strengths as well, because I can remember coming back after the season and pre-season, and everybody straight away had a spring in his step. Everybody, straight away, like, we're on a mission here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, okay, here we go. This is the time where we're going to put things right and we're going to put it right. Won the league, what, with 11 points or something? Could have been more, really, as yeah. well. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. We, but you it, know, it was a very, con you know, where people started to question the squad, yeah. you know, and, and this and that and the age and all this and that and the other. A lot of nonsense, really, because I'm 100% sure if, if Sir Alex Ferguson would have decided to stay on, yes, there would have been a few mutations. I'm sure that he would have brought... Some new new players, new energy into the team, but the framework with even with with Vida and Rio and Pat and all that was nothing wrong with them. They could have easily gone another two seasons, you know, winning winning more titles. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Ross has got a super chat here for us, and he says um, he's got two questions. One's about did you shit yourself when Mike popped the balloon at Bridge? I did. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is um, how do you reckon Rooney's going to get on as a manager? I think I think he's he's going to do all right, and I will tell you for why. Because, uh, like I said, Wayne was always the guy that would first of things he, he would come up with me in training and would ask me what we're going to do today, Rene. He always wanted to know, right? He has, has always had an interest in 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 what we were doing. Was he a good uh, trainer, Rene? Yeah, very good, top top notch. I wasn't listening. There was there was. I reckon that could have gone either way with him. Like, yeah, it no, seems no, like no. He's a bit no, 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 not at all. Freestyle, not at all. He he, he loved it. Brilliant, brilliant trainer. Highest expectations. And that was sort of well, those parameters were well laid down by Sir Alec Ferguson before Rooney came to United. You know yeah. what I mean? It was part and parcel of this is this is United. Yeah. Uh, we play hard, we train hard, uh, we play well, we train well. Yeah. You know, that sort of thing. No, I, 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 I do, and, and it's not a it's not a surprise to me that uh, he's been given this opportunity. Um, he will relish it at less he will he will got a lot of things to learn because a lot of things you learn through experience. You know, it's different. You know, when you are a player, you look after yourself. You you manage yourself to the best that you can uh, for every next performance. You know, now he has he has the control, or he needs to manage everybody, every player in the squad, everybody around the squad, all the staff. He he needs to want. He needs to be the leader. He needs to be the one that sets the direction. He needs to correct people. He needs to make tough decisions. That that's all comes in part and parcel of of being a manager. But he's he's been around. He's you know, obviously learn from the best and um, I think he's going to do well. Uh, we've got another super chat here from Bitson. He said, did Sir Alex decide all aspects of transfers? 
How would a transfer sort of materialise when you was there? Did you have any input? Well, of course, I think that so Alex would veto all the last last bit. Obviously, he, he worked very, very well together with David Gill and all that. But in the process, you had your, your chief scouts and all the things, the targets that you were looked at. We were, I'm sure that, you know, we were in asked about players at times you know, what do you think do you know anything of him you know if you did you know you looked into it and he wanted your opinion on that do you think he will really be good but actually again the parameters were, were, were fairly simple and straight and again you can see that in the in, in the book how I you know how we profile players with a with a jigsaw puzzle but when you bring in transfer it's all about two aspects being and becoming and being is uh, if you're bringing players in then you know they're going to perform for you i.e. Robin van Persie yeah yeah, established player, knows the Premier League, this is what we're going to get, assists and goals. That's a being, yeah? But more than anything, a lot of clubs want to be, have becoming players, you know, because they've got, you know, you, you don't pay, you know, top dollar uh, for them, but you you know there's going to be more out of him. You've got a lot of years to come from him. So they're more becoming, right. you know, they're more becoming than being. Yes, they can play, but it's more. Uh, Mason Greenwood is one of them. Obviously, he comes to the academy, but he is still a becoming player. You know what I mean? Rashford becomes is more, more, more uh, a being, but still there's there's more there's mileage in him. F- Bruno Fernandes is a being, yeah. yeah. Buy him, bang in there, boom, perform. Cavani, being, yeah. Yeah. But if you would bring, uh, let's say Sancho, if they still or, or, or Haaland as a striker, for instance, being, but still more to come. Yeah. And those were the sort of two parameters. Any players that Fergie brought up where he went not an inboss? Uh, fair, very honest, Steve. I honestly, the only one that I've ever really got involved with, and that's the only two two transfers that I've only got involved with. I had an opinion was Kagawa, Shinji Kagawa, yeah, uh, because I I felt that we needed somebody that could could establish that link between that sort of midfield and forward, very versatile, turn quickly, you know, clever, can assist, score a goal, that sort of thing, and Van Persie. That's the only one. All the, all the other ones, all the other ones I've never had, honestly. I've never, only, and, and Michael Owen. I can remember him ringing me about Michael Owen. He's available, you know, what do you think, you know what I mean? And it's sort of, and uh, I said, well, listen, that's, you know what you're going to get from him. You know, I'm not saying that he's going to be a starter every game, but he's so clever, so intelligent, knows the Premier League in and out, will score big goals for you, you know, as he's proven. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that was the only three, really. Um, how do you reckon we're going to get on this year? The top of the league at the moment, halfway through though, long, long way to go in a crazy season. You think we could be picking it up? Yeah, I, th- I think, I think, yeah, I think there's no guarantees, but I think United now is starting to move a- as close as they've been over since Sir Alex Ferguson left. Yeah, I think now, now I start to see a little bit of stability and continuity, what everybody's waiting for, because th- it has been such a a roller coaster, really. You know, that's why, again, and, and it's good that people are given time. Ollie has been given time. He's reinforced that many, many times. It's a long term process. These are discussions I've had. And yes, it goes with ups and downs. And, but now suddenly you start to see, you know what I mean? It, 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 in some ways, it was a shame, really, that they. They didn't. They didn't get to the final of the Carling Cup with City. You know what I mean? Because that's what United is about. Because that's the next step. That what Ola wants with his players: win things. Yeah. Yeah. Win things because that is, that's when you put your stamp on things. You know what I mean? Getting there. You know, almost getting there. It's. It's. And he knows that. And he. And, and he reinforces that all that. It's not good enough. You know what I mean? We want to do a step better. We want to win things. That's why again this game on Sunday is so important. Yeah. You know, get in there because we want to win the the FA Cup. It's a it's a big trophy, you know. But being up there now, you, you, we all see the problems that Liverpool are having. Yeah, uh, I think they're really moving into a really interesting period on the club for the first time. I can see some some mental and physical fatigue, you know, getting into the team, and that results in the performance they had of late, where United is, you know, is reeling the games off one by one and having a fantastic run away from home. Winning, you know, oh, yeah. a lot of players yeah. that are on form. Yeah, he's got a big squad to choose from. He just needs to, like I said. But the most important thing is you can't make the decision now because I think there's going to be more teams involved than ever before. And uh, i.e., Leicester still there up there. Uh, you know, uh, even Tottenham. You know, uh, don't don't dismiss them. City, of course, who are doing well. So there's a lot of lot of lot of points to be gained, a lot of points to be lost. But the key is when they get to 
the end of March, beginning of April. You know what I mean? That's when you see probably some daylight between some of the competitors. And then we have to look at, are there still four teams left, three teams left, or two teams left? And and that's what you, that's what we know in 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 in, uh, in April. And that's when we can start getting good. And if they're still there, then why not? Because the belief will grow as closer as we're going to get. Just just on that quickly, Renny. Sorry, uh, you know you mentioned Liverpool there, and you've had these two successful seasons, and you've been there yourself. How difficult is it to keep that going? Because they're going into their third season now, where they've had you know the Champions League, the Premier League, you at United, where won back-to-back titles and then won another one. How is it? How difficult is it to keep that momentum going and keep the players sort of, I wouldn't say keen or whatever, but keep them going because it is, it's such it is you know, difficult. a high level to maintain? It is very difficult. And, and that's why Sir Alec Ferguson is probably the best manager ever in the job. Be- because if you look at Klopp and what he's achieved, and it's remarkable what he's achieved, it's fantastic. And the same thing, obviously, what, what Pep has done with, with, with uh, Manchester City. They both needed the time to get where they were. They both had success. Pat City has dropped off, yeah? Similar looks to happen with things. So Alex Ferguson managed to maintain. And the reason why that is, if you look at it, Klopp has really relied on, on 11 players, almost, for two to three seasons. Yeah, yeah? That's why I said there's mental and, and f- physical fatigue. Ferguson used that squad in rotation so, so well. You know what I mean? And sometimes there was a bit of an element of a gamble, you know what I mean, where people say, they looked at the, the, the starting line, what's happening here? Yeah, you know what I mean? Fucking Giggs and Fletcher against Jesus. Chelsea. He's going to get <laughs> fucking murdered. Yeah. Yeah. Murdered, I tell yeah. you. No, 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 no. Oh, win 3-1. No. Rem- remember, <laughs> no, remember, remember the one, it's, honestly. Remember the one, I think it was a cup game. Was Arsenal. Arsenal. Yeah, when Arsenal. we played Fabio. And, yeah, on the wing. And, 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 <laughs> and fucking and mega. <laughs> Absolute samba you know, soccer, mate. You know why that was? <laughs> because we didn't have the players that we needed or for coming up. But I said, listen, if we really want to press right from the front, you know, put energy up front, Really make Wasn't it, it like Gibson Park and fucking Fabio and Groove Rider in midfield. No, we, 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 whatever. It was Fabio yeah, and yeah, Rafael the, on the wing. The, the Silver Brothers were, on the wing. Yeah, they're yeah. on the wing. Yeah. Wasn't it like Gibson and Park? Yeah, it could, yeah, it could be. It could be. It could. But it was only for one reason. Absolutely, press the fuck out of them. You know what I mean? Press, 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 press. <laughs> and then when played the game like they were on the fucking we, beach. We, we won that game two 0 didn't we? Yeah, two 0 Rafael and Fabio yeah. literally just ruined them, though. Not, I mean, pressing off off the ball, but on the ball. They were just like hitting switches and, and just. You know, I remember that game and I remember looking at the team and Arsenal were, you know. No, but do you, do you understand my, my answer to your question? Yeah. And, and the reason the difference was because Sir Alex used his, <laughs> his court, he used his players. You know, it wasn't like a set, a uh, uh, group of players that, that like you, you squeeze the orange, you get, you get the results, but then to maintain it, you fall in short because you've got nothing to back up. Yeah, Gibson and, and O'Shea midfield, and and, and bring and bringing and bringing the right, you know, bringing new players, new faces into yeah. into the setup. That's important because if you look at Liverpool, they only brought Jota in, you know, and he's obviously he's got injured. Uh, you know what I mean? So that that's the important thing to making sure you you keep a freshness and in and around the group. On Oli, obviously work with Oli. There's this sort of public persona that he's a bit of a nice guy and a yes guy. Tell me how wrong that is. Well, f- for me, at the end of the day, you just keep looking at the proof and the pudding. And he's he's had he's he's. I'm sure that if he's honest, then at times that he must have thought, oh, this is this is hard. This this is difficult because it's the the most difficult time really after Sir Alex Ferguson left. You know, when you look at the you know what what Sir Alex Ferguson had created over that 26 year period, especially at the back end. If United fans, yeah, oh, listen, what are we going to win this year? It's not if we're going to win something, what are we going to win? Yeah. How many are we going to win? Yeah. Plus, the, there was an exciting style, and that, that was the biggest compliment that I always felt from, from other fans, from other clubs. So, listen, I'm supporting West Brom, but I love to see United play. You know, or I'm supporting, you know, I, I can still remember Arsenal again, we beat them again. And we, we were on Wilmslow and I had some friends over, so I met them in the pub. And he said, Hey, you were the first team coach of United, aren't you? I said, Why are you fucking always beat us? You know what I mean? He says, oh, I'm getting fed up with it. So I'm an Arsenal fan, da 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 da. But I have to say, you know, I'm not really, I'm not, I don't like United, but I like the way you play. You know what I mean? So mm. that that's a big component. So back back to Ollie is. You know, yes, he's, he's, he's just a great person. You know, he's a great personality. He's, 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 a, he's a really, really nice guy. But I, I do honestly believe that he's very, very clear in his messages, what he expects from the players, you know, and, and what he wants to achieve and how to get there. I think there's no, you can stop any player in the street and you stop him and say, hey, by the way, you can tell, tell me, what, what does Oli expect from me, from you? And what, where does he want to go? 
They will go bang, 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 bang. So, because, the re reason why, because he had a ruthless streak in him when he was playing. This is what I want to know. I want to you, know you give how him, ruthless behind closed doors is. I'm, I'm telling you because I always say in, in Holland, they got, it, they got a great saying, and that's maybe for the people that are listening, they can Google it up. And I say it in Dutch. In the sport, see the mens. It's a Dutch line. In the sport, see the mens. What it means is, if people play sports, i.e. football, it reveals their character. Right. So how they are in sport... That's also how they are almost operating in normal life. Yeah? So uh, where you all you all talked about all that many times, great, you know, Baba does his job in the football. But when that ball fell for him, you know, he was ruthless. You know yeah. what I mean? Boom, put in the back of the net. And that ruthless bit, he will also have that in the way what he wants to achieve with United as a manager. That's what you want, man. Bit of ruthlessness. Well, I got that impression. Yeah. Like the the smiley press conferences. Sometimes a little cringy, if I'm being honest, but I go, there's no way he's walked in there after losing and he, smiled at him. The, th the thing with this is, and that's the important thing, it's, it's, and I've been in that position myself. You just played a game, you played really well, and you lost. And then five minutes after that, your emotions are still there, and whatever it is, you've lost because of a stupid mistake or a stupid referee decision. And the best thing is, and, he, and he, 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 he's learned from the best, it's just talk but don't say anything. Yeah, because the things that you have to say, they have to be done in the dressing room and on a training pitch. That's all. All that matters. Yes, obviously, the fans want to hear and all this and that and the other, and you need you need to give some information and whatever. But don't go over the top. You know, uh, don't 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 go this way if if it's going bad. Don't go completely that way if it's going well. Just you know, try to. And and sometimes it's not nice, but it is it, it is what it is. But you are a little bit trapped. Yeah, as as managers standing there doing your press conferences, you know what I mean. Yeah, and then, of course. You know, because you know because because yeah, you lose six one at home to to Tottenham. What are you gonna what are you gonna say? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You have to be because you are protecting you 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 have to protect the players. The players know they they they, they, they did a shit job. You know what I mean? But you need to get them right next week. Boom, a reaction. Boom. Well, that's why Fergie said he yeah. come out and go. Matt ref was shit today. Yeah, he was so deflected. <laughs> Yeah. Can't believe that decision. That's why we lost. <laughs> like we lost 6 1 now. Yeah, and that throwing yeah. was the pinnacle. That's what yeah. happened. Uh, we've got a couple of Kerala Blaster fans in. Um, how did you enjoy your time in India? Tremendously. And, and still, I, I'm still really. You uh, said Wes and Berber out there? Yeah, yeah. Wes, Wes and Berber. And, and, and Paul uh, Rachupka, oh, goalkeeper. Yeah, yeah. He was on the, on the books of United. No, it was it was great, and it, it, it again it, it was really annoying that it was cut it cut short, and and, and basically you know I've, I've never held back, and I'm not going to hold back now, and it was basically because we had a you know a bit of a, a dodgy CEO to so to speak that I don't think you know uh, was honest in his giving his information to the owner, you know what I mean, and uh, you know but we were it was it was great, you know the fans were ph phenomenal. I mean when we went to the stadiums, you know. The, it held about 60, 65 or 70, I don't know. There was, as soon as we came with the bus, the, the streets were lined with 35,000 fans, you know what I mean? Unthinkable of now. Loved it, great. It was a, it was a beautiful part of India, you know, beautiful part of India. Um, I can still remember one funny story. It was trying, because obviously when you go to India, you want to explore the country as well. We want to see the elephants, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> Now you had to travel about three hours to go sort of in, inland to Wasn't go. Kerala on the coast, like near. Goa, it's in the south, yeah. It's on the south, yeah. On the yeah. Uh, was it on the coast? Yeah, no, not really. You have to tr tr quite travel, yeah, travel quite a bit. But the Kerala area is is, is very. They call it the Venice of India, with all the the, the waters, you know, uh, the, the waterways inside. Beautiful, beautiful place. But I still remember we all organised for months. You know, we had a few days off. Let's go, go see the elephants. And the taxi driver was taking us. And he's taken us. As soon as we got on the main road, what do we see in front of us? A big, big truck with an elephant at the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> we could have turned around. <laughs> uh, we've got a super chat off Kevin. He says, what was your proudest moment as a coach during your time with United? Uh, he's mentioned the Barca semi in 08, the final, or something else that you, well, we wouldn't think about. Proudest moment. Oh, that's a that's a tough one. I mean, almost you know, almost the whole that that whole period with most. Obviously, we had a few downs. Obviously, but the most of it was 
uh, it's not like you can't capture the one particular moment because there are there were some standout games that had this you know this this uh, you know uh, last minute you know uh, Michael Owen goal against Man City you know what I mean uh, great but that's not a pro that's an exciting moment the proudest the proudest moments you know. Um, the, the pro okay, I got it. The proudest moment really is when so Alex was giving me the opportunity to become first team coach. That must have been, yeah, if if you think about it, because you just you know, it wasn't like you know, you, it just develops. You know what I mean? Um, prior to that was the proudest moment when you know Les Kershaw, uh, you know, from the academy of Man United approached me to become and work for them. And then you've got a chance, listen, and you have a chance to work for the biggest club in the world, the best club in the world, and da-da-da-da. And uh, funny enough, you think to yourself, there's so many Premier League clubs, and and I've always, whatever, if, if you look, because I grew up in Holland, you know what I mean? I didn't have a particular, you know, I wasn't a fan of a particular club in Holland, but I, I liked PSV because I came from that area. But I did like Ajax as well because I was a big Johan Cruyff fan. Yeah. In, in in England, it was it was United because at the time when I grew up, the only English game we saw was the FA Cup final. On was it the first Saturday of May or something? It's or, usually around that time, was it? Yeah, something it? like that. And at that time, one of the finals I still remember was Arnhem Muren, you know, Dutch player. Oh, was that eighty three? Was that eighty three or eighty five? Yeah, was was obviously playing, you know, in that final and Man United and all said this and that and the other. And in ninety three. <clears throat> that was the first time I travelled to England to do one of my uh, international courses. I, I did my coaching badge, started them in Holland, but I knew it's going to be difficult with my with my player background. You never know, never really you know played professional, semi professional, and then Holland there was a lot of politics of ever doing a pro life. So I thought I need to have another you know a plan B, <clears throat> so to speak. So I went to England and I did this international uh, prelim course with. I think there was 24 different inter nationalities on the course, but and it was three weeks. It was it was murder basically because you did you were on the training pitch every day, you had to do all the sessions and all that. Your legs were falling off after you know one week, but in the second week there was always this van that 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 came and they had every shirt in England you could think of. This guy, you know what I mean? They're all there and you know sort of memorabilia. And I always remember I bought the Man United shirt. Which was was the the sponsor was sharp, I think, with the laces. Oh yeah, that's uh, the one upside down. When Brian Robson's wearing it. Yeah, yeah, that one, that one, and uh, and and that's the one. It, funny enough, that was ninety three. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that was the year that I moved to Qatar to work with Will Curver. Yeah, and then in two thousand and one, eight years later, that's when Lars Kershaw approached me, you know, to come and work for the academy. Of uh, of Manchester United, so that was a very very proud moment. Uh, three three really. That was one. Then the second one when Sir Alex Ferguson gave me the opportunity to work with the reserves, which was a fantastic season with great players like Johnny Evans, Gerard P.K., Giuseppe Rossi, all of them. And then the moment when he, you know, you got you know to work as a first team coach for United and then have the success you've had. It's fantastic. Fantastic indeed. I'm going to leave it on that. Do we have to? Can we not keep going for another hour? He's got to go home in a couple of hours, I think. Um, but if you want to check out Rennie's book, uh, we will link down in the description below so you can go and check it out on Amazon. Like I said, it's not just if you're a coach. If you're a coach, you're doing yourself a disservice by not getting it. If you're if you're just a fan, which I would hope everyone watching this is, it's definitely worth checking out because there's some good info in there. But Rennie, thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. And obviously, we'll be here on Sunday for the watch along with the Scousers. See you in a bit.